Hey gang, I uh, thought I'd touch base uh, based on a video, not a video, a uh, post that uh, Todd, itinerant hobbyist, put out uh, just, I think yesterday or last night, and I think it was uh, in a reaction to the training that we had last night with Ty uh, Snufa, I think is how you pronounce his name, sorry Ty if I pronounce your name wrong. Good guy, Ty. He just spent about an hour and a half teaching 16 of us, uh, you know, the kind of the basics of the GTS ground tactical system. Pretty, uh, pretty straightforward system, all in all. Uh, very wordy rules, lots and lots of detail to it, and then big exclusive rule books for each uh, each module that's out currently uh, the, of the two. Anyway, for Hell's Highway is uh, what I'm mainly interested in at the moment, but. Um, so it was great to kind of get a, uh, a feel for that. And uh, Todd's reaction to that was to kind of come up with a, a quick hit list of things that he wanted to focus on and uh, where his gaming is going and, and things like that. So it was kind of like a, a wake-up call for him, I guess, which is kind of cool, right? Uh, earlier in the year, I had written uh, or posted you know, about uh, you know, my pre-orders and uh, my goals for uh, the end of 2013, what I was trying to do for the last 30 days of the month, and I had 10, 10 objectives, of which I think I made five, right? Uh, and then early in the year, I looked at, well, here's what I'm going to try and do for the year. Well, we're almost exactly halfway through the year, and I wanted to kind of touch base on that as, a, as kind of a catalyst based on um, on Todd's post, itinerant hobbyist's post. And by the way, you should check out his, uh, he has a blog, and he has a video channel, which has you know hundreds of videos on miniatures and board games, and, and it's mainly wargaming focused, so it's all pretty cool stuff. And uh, definitely uh, hit that. He's on uh, he's on uh, Facebook as well, of course. So that th I had three or four themes that I wanted to try and explore this year, and I've got a long-term, ongoing, multi-year it'll be project, the chronological walkthrough of World War II. And the idea there is literally just to see what we can do in terms of. Uh, Playing all the titles I currently own in, in, that are World War II related in a chronological format. Uh, so, some things will get out of sync. For instance, when I played DAC 2, that was the African campaign. I'll probably come circle back to discrete battles in the African campaign and touch on those at uh, various points in the chronological year. Uh, as it as it pertains to that, so we've done a fair bit there. We looked at uh, the Winter War. We looked at the uh, Polish invasion, uh, the invasion of Poland by uh, Case White by the Germans. Uh, we did the Blitzkrieg Legend. In fact, we did that twice. It was so much fun. Uh, we did uh, Marina McCur, the GD, GDW game, and Strike North for the uh, Sweden Norway stuff, and a whole uh, RAF uh, Battle of Britain. I only played a couple of turns of that because that's a boring ass sorry game. Uh, although I would like to try and get the second edition and, uh, and play it opposed to the two player game. I think that might be fun. Uh, what else? And so anyway, so now it can then it kind of got to the Eastern Front and so with the Eastern Front I looked at uh, some Blitzkrieg style games. So I looked at uh, Hitler Turns East, uh, the Dark Valley, and the Russian campaign, uh, the old uh, Avalon Hill or Jeco title, uh, played all of those, and in fact played uh, some of those more than once, and wrote about all those. So we're now at the point where it's the uh, the, the um, Operation Typhoon, and I'm playing Case Blue, and that is has become a huge time sink. And I think, think since January, I've only played two months of game time, and I'm doing all that solo, so it takes. An enormous amount of time to get through that, and I'm, I'm, I'm having second thoughts about playing much past the first of January on this. So there's that project chronological thing, which will kind of carry on as things go. So there's that, and that's one. And the second would be uh, taking uh, a ancient title that's kind of at a strategic or operational level, and then as we play the game, create battles for great battles of history. Okay, that sounds interesting, and I've messed around uh, with that a little bit with uh, Hannibal Rome versus Carthage and uh, I was playing an opposed game on Vassal that I was going to use for the battles but the, the turnaround times were too fast and that game's now defunct. Uh, Jeff's going to quit on that because apparently I make too many mistakes uh, even though I thought it was a learning game. Yeah Jeff I got you on a video so you need to sign up and play me again. 
But I'm going to either use that or Helene's or A Most Dangerous Time and generate some, some decent conflict. Uh, ideally, I'd like, like to use Carthage, but I'm not prepared to pay 70 bucks for that type. So, we got that to think about, all right? Uh, the, so there's, that has been happening on and off, and I had a little hiatus there, but instead of not playing anything on the agent's side, I, I've played several large battles of uh, Hoplite. Then my next, my other theme, uh, third theme, a big theme anyway, is the uh, <coughs> uh, World War Three titles, uh, hypotheticals. And so we've been, uh, we looked at Hofgap earlier, uh, late last year. Uh, I just played down to a division commander in a play by poll scenario where you guys all get to vote on what the US forces should do and that worked out great, had a lot of fun doing that. I had a lot of interest in the early parts of it, and then I think I got a little too enthusiastic and wasn't particularly clear on what some of your choices were. Uh, so we had a, a, a pretty significant drop off near the end in terms of voting. Uh, although those that stuck with it uh, had a great time and really thought they were on the knife edge of uh, having the Soviets break through when in fact uh, you had no problems whatsoever. So that was good. That was a little suspense. Uh, and now we're playing uh, the Fool the Gap. Uh, maps of uh, the Central Front series, Half Gap, um, Fifth Corps, and BAOR. We're playing those three titles combined in a campaign. And that's coming along great, doing, playing the second turn of that. After that, we'll probably look at GDW's World War Three, And then after that, we'll do uh, some more modern stuff. I may look at uh, the next war, uh, Korea or uh, something along those lines. I'm hoping, that probably won't happen this year, I was hoping that the Panzer, the re-release of main battle tank, would be out uh, before the end of the year, because I'd like to get some tactical stuff done. Which brings me to my next topic. I'd like to keep, uh, I had it started late last year, looking at playing chronologically through all of the modern battles of uh, Lock and Load. So I grabbed the uh, Ring of Hills as the first one. I know Vietnam, the Vietnam title's there uh, to play, but I kind of want to play all of the Ring of Hills uh, battles first. And then uh, we'll look at what else is going on in the, in, in the, in the series, uh, and including add-on scenarios that have been written most recently, uh, and play those out. Day Heroes want to play all those out. We've played two or three of those, and I'm just picking a, a module and playing a game, then picking another, another module and playing a game, but doing it in chronological order. So we'll get through all of that fun stuff. The other, uh, so there's there the three or four big things, and then I have been over the last 18 months exploring the concept of the operational art of strategy, and that has led me to all sorts of different titles and. Uh, mainly Napoleonics and soon, uh, I guess, uh, uh, Civil War, American Civil War stuff, as we look at how uh, my view of or my understanding of how we uh, migrated militarily from the classical war strategy to the operational art, operational art of war, which is in essence still used today. Uh, so I'm enjoying doing that as well, and we'll put uh, some uh, more titles on the table in regards to that topic. Uh, I was looking at, uh, that kind of led me down the path of comparing tactical systems in Napoleonics. Still doing that exercise. I've got uh, three titles played. I'm going to be looking at Labate next, and then the NBS system. Uh, and we'll probably use Talavera as a battle uh, to compare side by side two, two tactical level systems at about the, approximately the same scale. And we'll write up some comparisons on that. That's probably, that, all of that stuff will uh, keep me uh, fairly busy going forward. But there, my focus is at the moment that, aside from any kind of vassal play that I do with buddies online, uh, right now I'm doing Iron Tide with uh, my friend Steve and the occasional lock and load session and of course the guys in town will get together and play something either two player or four player or whatever the case may be three player and they all uh, kind of get thrown into the mix as uh, add-ons so they're my goals and objectives for the rest of the year now that we're halfway through what are you going to be doing pop a note in the comments let me know uh, if you've got ideas or suggestions based on my game list that you think i should play or you think i should uh, do something different that you'd like to see that's 
uh, that I own currently. Uh, I've got a big list of uh, uh, pre-orders here that I've just been going through and I've gone and cancelled uh, several of them and uh, with a view that I'm, I'm trying to minimize just random purchases and I'm also flushing out uh, games that I'm absolutely not happy with and absolutely don't like. Uh, and I've sold about two and a half thousand dollars worth of games in the last three or four months. Uh, I've also bought several hundred dollars worth of games uh, in that period of time as well, uh, kind of picking up bits and pieces that I've been missing or wanting to get, uh, Empire and Arms, uh, The Next War from SBI, uh, things like that. That uh, There are games that I believe that I want to own and I will play one day, and there are games that I want to own and I may not ever play, but I just want to know that I have it in case I do want to play it. And the games that I own that I don't like, but I'll keep it because I might like it later, or my views might change, my feelings might change about it. And there are games that are just not me and I don't want to play them. And I have about a dozen left of those that I want to get rid of. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not good games for somebody else, it just means they're not games for me. So, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll see uh, me posting uh, to sell them uh, as, uh, as things progress, probably on Facebook is where I'm selling most of my games right now. All right, I'll catch you guys later. That's uh, the Joel Toppins forum has uh, quite a few people posting games for sale, and the prices are good and fair, and uh, it's easy to do business with people, and uh, I'm really enjoying uh, doing the transactions there. So it's a he has a little war gamers marketplace, I think it's called. So anyway, that's all I got. So I, I'm curious. I want to hear what you're doing. What are you playing? What are you plan to play? And what are you doing about getting off your ass and playing something as opposed to writing about it on Facebook or on uh, BGG? Go do something. Roll some dice. Later.